Hello, I'm Springfellow. Good to see you again. Remember how the last time Spring Energy Earth scientists indicated where we might find oil and gas? Well, now we need to find out if their prediction was right by drilling an exploration well. This well order from the Earth scientists contains all the information we need about the location for the well. But drilling a well is a complicated process. So where do we start? The first thing to do is some careful planning to ensure the operation will be carried out safely and smoothly. Let's see how they're getting along. Hey there, what are you doing? At the moment, we're discussing the different issues that may have an effect on the drilling location and the rig we use. Like what? Well, the site survey that's been completed has provided us with lots of information about the seabed, water currents, and potential shallow gas or water pockets in the top layer of the sea floor. All important information that we need to consider before deciding where to drill. In addition, the site survey has shown that corals are present on the seabed, and because of this, we have decided to change the location for the well. I see. Anything else? There are several critical specifications that have to be taken into account when selecting a rig. In this case, we have identified five possible rigs that are available on the market. So, which one will you choose? Here's the perfect rig. Let's take this one. Oh, this one is new and shiny, but it looks a bit patronizing, doesn't it? Whoa, that one looks old and worn, but still good to go. Oh, it looks tired. I wonder how long that's been in the North Sea. Hey, hey, hang on. This one's absolutely perfect. Let's take this one. Nah, won't reach the bottom, I guess. This one is cute. Hmm, that one looks a bit confused, doesn't it? Nah, this one's too small. Oh, look at that one. I really like it. That one looks confident. Yeehaw! Now that's more like it. This one has all the necessary features. It might be one of the most expensive, but meeting the specifications is more important than the cost. We'll go for this one. Wow! I'll leave you to it. Now that the location of the rig has been decided, we can get started on detailed planning. This phase is where we typically create all necessary operational documentation. For instance, a detailed well design, various risk assessments, numerous HSE-related analysis, and a drilling program. All these documents are then used as a basis for different permits and applications that we need to forward to the authorities in order to receive consent to drill. When the personnel arrive on the rig, the platform manager welcomes them and holds a safety meeting before work commences. On the drilling deck, Preparations are now being carried out in accordance with the approved well design and drilling program. We're now ready to start drilling. The procedure for drilling a typical exploration well is more or less the same as for most wells. We start out by drilling approximately 100 metres into the seabed and a conductor is installed and cemented. To reveal any shallow gas or shallow water in the area, we drill a pilot hole through the cement to the next casing shoe depth. If there are no hazards present, the diameter of the hole is opened up and a surface casing is installed and cemented. Now we can install the blowout preventer and marine riser. A smaller hole is then drilled through the cement to the needed depth and a casing installed, cemented and tested. It is the formation pressure and depth of the well that decide how long each section of the well will be drilled and whether an additional casing needs to be installed. We're now closing in on the reservoir. A smaller hole is drilled down to just above the reservoir. Whoa! Wait! What's happened? We seem to have a situation here. We've come across a gas pocket with a trapped higher pressure than estimated. This has caused a small amount of gas to enter the well. Normally, the pressure of the drilling fluid, also known as mud, keeps the conditions in the well stable and safe. However, when overpressured gas enters the well, it pushes the drilling fluid out and making the well potentially dangerous. The first thing we do is close the blowout preventer. We then increase the density of the drilling fluid and circulate the gas out of the well. The gas and the drilling fluid are then separated and the gas is vented out. 
and in some cases flared. Once the gas has been circulated out of the well, the well design is then reviewed to check that it is safe to continue as planned. Safety always comes first. It is now safe to open the blowout preventer and continue drilling. Thanks to the detailed planning carried out before the operation, the team knew exactly what to do to regain control. Finally, we reach the reservoir. It looks like this one contains a lot of oil and gas. As we drill through the reservoir to total depth, we collect lots of information about the formation, including the formation pressure, the saturation of oil and gas, and how easily they can be extracted. Wow! This looks promising! The last thing to do is plug and abandon the well. We plug the well using several large cement plugs. We cut and retrieve as much of the casing as possible. The BOP can then be removed. The wellhead is cut and the rig can leave the location. An ROV is sent out to take a last look around the area and check that everything is retrieved before the operation is completed. Once the team is back on shore, the data gathered during the operation is analysed. We have to make sure that this information and the lessons learnt from the project are available for future work. An extensive final report is prepared and sent on to Spring Energy's management, our partners in the licence and the authorities. The drilling team has worked hard and done a great job. We've proved that the Earth scientists were right and now have concrete evidence of where the oil and gas reservoir is. The next step is to extract the oil and gas from the reservoir. Join me next time and I'll show you how.